hey, 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 shake a leg to supersize your business. What the heck does this mean? Well, the expression shake a leg comes from the Navy, it became popular in the late 1800s. It actually means to move, get a move on, move faster, um, speed up, hurry up, get the let out. All those things that mean speed up. It comes from the Navy when somebody was moving slowly, usually their legs aren't moving. And in order to speed them up, you would command them to shake a leg. Now, if you're a parent, if you interact with other human beings, chances are you have in encountered a situation where people are moving at different paces. I tend to talk really fast. I tend to move pretty fast. I tend to do everything pretty fast. This is not necessarily the speed at which people around me now or the majority of my life have moved. All of us have our own little drum. We have our own little clock within us, our own internal pace that we're most comfortable operating at. And we need to respect that in ourselves and in other people as well. Sometimes, like lots of times, we forget about this, especially when it comes to dealing with our customers. We have to operate in our businesses and in our life in a way that's congruent and consistent and respects other people, other people's wishes, other people's time frames, other people's way of doing things, right? Especially our customers. We want to pay attention to how they like to receive information, how fast they want to move, how fast they like to make decisions. And we have to operate within that in a respectful way if we want to have them continue to do business with us or do business with us in the first place. So anybody that has kids can relate to what I'm talking about. Have you ever wanted your kids to do something and you needed to go do it, like even go to the doctor or go to school or go do something fun, go to the mall, go shopping. Hey, we gotta go get groceries, we gotta go to the laundromat, whatever it might have been. Have you ever had your children resist or not wanna go? I'm hanging out with my four-year-old granddaughter these days during the week and helping out with her. And sometimes she doesn't wanna go to school in the morning. She just goes for a few hours. Sometimes she doesn't wanna go home at night. And I was, it's been a huge reminder for me, the power of transitions and how we need to help people manage transitions. We need to help people and make it easy for them to do business with us. Because doing business with us is usually a transition. Then we need to make their experience with us as seamless and smooth as possible so that they will have a great experience, love doing business with us, and want to do it again. But throughout the entire process, we want to manage expectations and manage any time we're asking people to do something different, especially if it's at a different pace, a different speed, or different timing, then feels 100% perfect to them. So if I'm talking to someone and I'm wanting to do business with them and I'm talking 100 miles an hour, like I pretty much always do, and they are a laid back reserved person that wants to move at a slower pace, what is the probability that they're going to interact and do business with me? Slim to none. That's why we do things like pay attention to other people and find out how they like to receive things and we deliver what it is that we deliver in the way that is best for them. Um, getting anybody to do anything, whether they want to or not, can be an exercise in frustration if we're trying, if it's about, if we're making it about us, if we're letting our ego get in the way, and if we're trying to convince people that they should do something or speed up. I, I spent a lot of years in, in corporate America and running my own businesses, and I realized, and once I realized that I stopped doing it, but I used to be frustrated all the time, especially in manufacturing environments, because I expected people to be working faster. And now I'm an industrial engineer, so I spent years studying time and motion studies, as boring as that could be, and sounding is as boring as it sounds, but studying how long it should take people to do things. Because in manufacturing, each task is dependent on someone else in the chain, right? That's true of most of our organizations, but some things are more time dependent than others. So on a manufacturing line, person A and person B and person C are performing a task. Person C can't do their job until person B gives them their output. Person B can't do his or her job until person A gives him or her his or her output. So everything is dependent on one another. And the length of how long it takes for that task to happen will expand or contract depending on how the pace is of A and B and C. So I spent a lot of my life being frustrated thinking that it should take 
X amount of time, say two hours, to make ravioli, and it would take four or five. And the definition of frustration and insanity, <clears throat> perhaps, is expecting things to be different than they are. Usually there was a reason why it took four hours instead of two, but if I didn't understand the reason why, which is a huge clue for how we can interact with people and get them to do what we want at the pace we want, explain why. Have the reason why. It doesn't even have to be 100% rational or understandable to them. Just simply giving people a reason will encourage them to change their pace or speed up or be willing to accept a change or something that you're proposing to them. So never underestimate the reason why. Never underestimate an explanation. Never underestimate the power of um, respecting other people's paces and how other people choose to do things when interacting with them. I think it's, it's just uh, good human relations and social acuity and respecting other people. So shake a leg. Have you ever been told to shake a leg or hurry up in a job or in a personal situation? Have you ever used the expression, hey, shake a leg? I don't know that I ever used the expression, shake a leg when I was leading people, but I would ask them questions to try to encourage them to transition at a faster pace. Uh, I admit it, there were some times I'm sure my folks thought I was a slave driver because I was like, okay, this, this thing that we're doing should take us two hours. Or I would schedule time, like say in a meeting or something, hey, we're gonna talk about this for 15 minutes and then when we're done, we're just gonna make a decision. We're just gonna have a 15 minute discussion. Now we'd, we'd set a timer and only devote 15 minutes to that. Otherwise, I think it's called Parkinson's Law. The amount of time that you devote to something or allow for something, um, the task at hand will automatically fill up that amount of time. So if you set a time, you'll spend the full 15 minutes doing it. If you don't set a time, you'll never get something done because the task or the project will expand and it will just never get done because there's no commitment to getting it done. So help people with transitions, um, respect other people's pace, and you won't have any struggle or stress around the expression of shaking a leg and using that to grow and build your business. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow or um, you'll hear me tomorrow with another idiom. Where does it come from? What does it mean? And how might you be able to apply it to your life and your business? Have an awesome day.